thank you much thank you very much for lending me your time i promise to speed up as the last presentation today uh, if you have questions interrupt me so we don't have any questions at the end uh, in general, I guess it's quite obvious in the very, very short topic I want to show you today. Um, I don't know how many of you already implemented indoor navigation, but as you can see here, it's quite an awkward process at the moment. You need a lot of hardware, beacon, Wi-Fi, or whatever. Then you got a big venue, as you see on the second picture, and the third picture in general is you have to take the fingerprint, which means it doesn't matter what kind of uh, indoor navigation you would like to implement, you have to run around in the building, and at the end, what do you get? It's a 2D map and a point somewhere at the map, and that's it. So what we said is we want to do something where you need no hardware, an easy implementation process, uh, not only show you where you are, but where you have to go to. And as we've seen during the process, it's not only about indoor navigation, but indoor experience. And as you will see afterwards from the use cases that we're having, in general, that's really the main focus that we're having. It's really about merging uh, offline world with digital content. I mean, that's what it's all about with augmented reality, but in this case, we are just trying it with big venues. The process itself is very easy. I'm sorry I'm not the technician, so it's a sales video. Uh, but the blue line that you can see is we developed a technology that you can use your smartphone or a digital camera, depending on the size of the venue that you're having. So with a digital camera and a fisher lens, you just can run through a building or even take electric scooter. So that's what we tested the last times, because we get some airports we which would like to implement our technology just by night. So you drive with the scooter, uh, our backend uh, calculates out of the video that we get a point cloud. This point cloud will be merged with the 2D map that we receive from the operators of the venue. And so when you have our SDK in your application and you point into the venue, we know where you are and we're looking at and can augment it uh, the journey that you're having. So as you've seen, you just it's a very easy process. You just scan the venue. Scanning means you take our application, run through the building, that's it, upload it in our backend, and then implement our SDK in iOS and uh, Android. And since we developed it in C++, we're also now thinking about uh, implementing it for Windows because we got a lot of requirements from industrial side as well, and most of them are working with Windows. Millimeter accuracy, in general, we exactly know where you are because when you're looking into the room, uh, out of the angle, how you look at the structure, we know uh, where you are exactly and where you're looking to. So the good thing is no additional hardware needed. We got some competitors uh, which are also doing optical tracking, but they need a very big device to scan a building and very slowly go through the building. We got some other competitors which uh, use hardware for the operational part. So when you, are ex uh, when you are the user, you need beacons to triangulate yourself. From our side, we only use optical tracking. So that's the big advantage, and it's very easily and fast scalable. We got someone who asked before, yeah, but can you do this for 100 supermarket locations at the same time? Sure, of course. I mean, you just give our software uh, to the head of the retail store, and they're just scanning it. And within one day, you can scan 1,000 buildings if you like. That's no, no problem at all. Patent and so on doesn't really matter. And we also got some clients which ask, I've already implemented beacons. Can I use a technology on top? Of course, that's possible as well, not necessary, but it's possible. And considering the accuracy, as you can see here, that's um, implementation we had in Heathrow Airport, for instance. Um, you see, we're looking into the room, we're looking at the wayfinding sign, the smartphone is set to Chinese, and when you're looking at the sign, you already see this uh, sign in Chinese. So what I want to show you with this is that it's really not only about indoor experience, but it's also about making a journey through a venue personal. Oh, sorry, I have to click on play, otherwise it's not working. Where is it, where is it? I'm sorry, the, the video that you see right now from our implementation here, it's not perfect, but it's done solely by our client. So no cutting from our side, no faking. That's really just the video. We have two clients there. One is holding the smartphone, the other one is filming. As you can see here, since we are running by 60 frames per second, you even can put in uh, 3D content like a car where they normally are not able to put advertising there. Um, as you can see, very stable. The wayfinding signs translated to la your language. We even have some implementations in Dubai where you can make the wayfinding signs interactive. So you'd like to go to the toilet, you look at the wayfinding sign with toilet, you click on the toilet sign, and automatically the navigation starts to the toilet, for instance. 
Um, we got a very easy to use backend, uh, backend with a CMS system, so, and then admin application, that means that the same application the end users are using, or the same recognition. You, as an operator, just go into your venue and you say that's a Starbucks, that's a Taco Bell, or whatever, and then in the CMS system that's just linked with the tag, and so you just can add, I don't know, the PDF every day with the daily menu and easily change it every day. So it's very to use, uh, very to use, easy to use tool. Um, another client from us, it's a museum. What I like very much, so it's not really about navigation, but it's about how much time do you have when you're entering a museum, 60 minutes, all the time. Depending on this, we can calculate different routes. Um, and what I like so much is that it's interactive. So depending on your language, all the text that you see there for each item is already then in your language. You even don't have to stand there in front to be able to read what, what's standing there, but you can read it on your smartphone. And we are now working on the next stage for this implementation in two or three months. Then some of the items even will become alive. So you're looking, for instance, at a painting and the painting will become alive in 3D and will tell you the story what you see actually in the painting. And we'll even have in December, I guess, for the next show they are, they are hosting there, a merge of AI and Weir, where they have a model with different mountains from Switzerland, for instance. With AI, we can show you the height of the different mountains and what they are called. And when you click on the top of it, with VR, you have a live stream and you're standing there and with a cardboard, you, you are there 360 degree live on top of the mountain. So it's AI and VR. Mixed, I guess, as I heard from before, it's, I guess, then a little bit of hyper-reality as far as I've seen it. Um, and coming to the, let's, uh, to the last demo video, what I like very much, because it shows a lot of different use cases that you can do. In general, we are having a, a horizontal approach, which means is in the different industries, we're always looking for partners. We do some first project implementations, as you've seen it here, but we are looking for partners. One of our partners, for instance, Scientific Games, which are leader in the area of, uh, for casino supplies, supplying with CRM software, e-wallets, uh, slot machines, everything that you need for a casino. And we've done a demo um, at the worldwide exhibition where they uh, invited all of their clients to show the different use cases. Here you can see Marcel and he's just walking through the door where you simulate, oh, you're now in a casino area because then, for instance, due to some law in different uh, states, you're only allowed to play for money when you're in the casino. Thanks to our accuracy, we know when you're walking through the door, you're allowed to play. When you go outside, you're not allowed to play. You see different... Uh, ah, perfect. You see different shows, you directly can book the shows, you're in front of a slot machine, you would like to play, and thanks to that, that we exactly know what slot machine you're looking at, and you said you'd like to play, you directly over the e-wallet can send the money, for instance, directly into the slot machine. Um, the nice thing is, in addition, since they already have uh, CRM software and so on in their system, they know, is it a budget player or high roller? Depending on this, you can show different content, depending on the language that you're speaking. Of course, the content is in the light, right language. So the whole journey through the casino in future will be tailored to you. And what I like very much is you see a car there, you can directly, for instance, jump into the car and know why you should play for the big jackpot, for instance. And the nice thing is that the same recognition that we're using for end-user version can be used for several B2B use cases as well. For instance, here for a waiter or a waitress, you can order over your smartphone a drink. You see the picture of the guys who ordered something, what they ordered. And for instance, when they're moving from one machine to the other, you already see where they are sitting and where to find them. And the last use case before coming to an end, you can use then the same scan from the building and the same data over the same API uh, for a maintenance use case. So maintenance guys can walk through the venue, they see where is an error at which machines when we have an API to the uh, maintenance software. We can see, oh, there's an error in that machine, click on it, and you already also see where to solve the issue, for instance. Jumping over it to save time. So in general, the nice thing with the technology is that it's very easy to scan without any hardware, no hardware for localization needed. Everybody walking through the venue is sending back a stream uh, to our server. So as you've seen before, we can localize someone 
good for the waiter or the waitress where to find where you're sitting, but also, in, for instance, good for an airline before they're closing the gate. They know, ah, oh, Clements is just around the corner, so wait these two minutes for the flight because it's more expensive to rebook him than let the door open for two minutes. And due to that, that we get the stream back from everybody using our technology, we also can indicate, look, the quality is going down in a certain area. Have you, for instance, changed something in the, in the building? Or we see, okay, there's the 10, uh, 10 person already walking through the wall. If they are not got, maybe there's a door. And uh, what we're working on in future is not only proactively tell you, look, I guess you have to rescan because you've changed something in the building, but then also have a self healing solution, which means that 25 people recognizing the same change in the building, and then we can update the uh, general map behind it. And then I think uh, at the end is, since we have all the data stored centralized, you can use the same venue data in different applications. For instance, airports want us to have APIs for all the different airlines. So when you're flying from New York to Vienna, for instance, you can use uh, the American Airlines or the Austrian Airlines application, and you can use it to guide to the gate in New York. And then when you arrive, go directly to the rental car company, for instance. Thank you very much. To be fair, I mean, our technical guy says I'm not allowed to say millimeter accuracy, <laughs> but submeter, sorry for that, but uh, I'm the sales guy. But as you can see, how we can verify it, that in the picture that you see, we can recognize around 1,200 to 1,500 features depending on the venue itself. We only need 10 or to 15 percentage and the relation to each other. And since this is very accurate, and due to the angle that we know, we exactly know where you are standing. Maybe it's within that area, but then in the end, it's much more accurate than all the others. And that's why we can directly detach the right information to the right spot in the venue. Can we use the in general, at the moment, not because we need the location, uh, we need the internet connection to make the initial position. If the venue is very small, might work disconnected, but at the moment we only work for larger venues and then we need it for the initial positioning. If you have some other input for initial positioning or you do it manually, it would work. But in general, all the use cases that we're having, they all want to have the tracking data and the API of the position where you are, and so it always has to be online right now. Okay. The size itself is not really big. So an airport from small to large can be 100 megabyte to one gigabyte, something like this. But in general, the data being exchanged between the smartphone and the server is only a few kilobytes because it's really just the features that we are recognizing and they're only consisting of X, Y, Z coordinates and description to each other. So it's really little. Something we work on. To be fair, that you have also audio guidance, especially for blind people, that you can have it around your neck. We recognize we are looking at and it can tell you via audio where you have to walk. But to be fair, we are not there already. Thank you very much for being patient till the end.